So you guys should be looking at um, this live show called Data to the People. Um, it is by Lonnie Lee Hood, <laughs> aka me. Um, I am the editor in chief of the Southern and Appalachian Cooperative Press. And I'm so glad that you guys are here because, like I said, this is the first time I've taught this workshop. I'm very thrilled. Um, I'm very thrilled to uh, teach this topic for the first time. So uh, what we're going to cover tonight is five types of government data anyone can access, uh, how to use and select your area of interest for each, um, and how to send a FOIA request or a Freedom of Information Act request. Um, I'm sure a lot of this shit sounds boring because it sounds like legal and government jargon, but um, essentially, this is really important government data that you can use to power investigations, sort of root out uh, injustice, um, look for, you know, important climate change reports. So there's a lot of important stuff here, even if the words mm -hmm. that we're, I'm using right now sound boring. Um, here's a little about me before we jump in. I have been a journalist for 10 years. I uh, started freelancing when I was... Um, really 18, 17, 18, and I'm 28 now. So I've been doing this quite some time. Uh, bylines, uh, you can find me in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Teen Vogue, and the Smithsonian. I primarily cover Southern and Appalachian sustainability. So I write a lot about Appalachia in the South. Um, and then if you have not seen my portfolio or if you want to see some of the bylines that I have, because I do other things too, like um, I have a lot of bylines on video games. So I kind of cover a few different, you know, I have a few different beats, um, but the one I promote the most is um, Southeastern um, sort of regional work, but you may be interested in something else. So there's my portfolio link in case you'd like to see it. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the, this is the meat of the presentation here. Um, I'm looking at my computer because my battery is getting a little low. So I'll, I may have to spring for my charger here in a minute. Um, but if that happens at all, I'll have to unplug my display and that will be really annoying. Um, so anyway, let's see. Uh, did I get a join request? No. Okay. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture, um, otherwise known as the USDA, a lot of you in the survey that, uh, you know, when you signed up, you said that the USDA was of particular importance. I'm not sure why that seemed to be a theme, but I wanted to make sure that we cover it. So for most of these slides, as you'll see down here at the bottom, I've included a set of like short instructions, but I make a note of it because I kind of want to explain to you the way these um, slides are set up first. So you'll notice for most all of these slides, the format is, you know, there's a couple of links at the top and then there's some instructions at the bottom. Um, the links are to different elements or different um, portions of that department, that government agency's website. So the first one that we're looking at here is the actual public search tool that we're for the USDA that I'm going to show you how to use in a minute. And then a lot of times I'll also include the media blog or like news updates uh, website for the given department, which in this case is like the USDA media slash blog, because, um, you know, I wanted people to have access to overall news or headlines or to kind of see what the department itself is prioritizing. A lot of times this re whoops a lot of times this amounts to propaganda that's something to keep in mind because this second link here like when you're looking at news releases and press releases from government agencies it's just important to keep in mind that you know a lot of times they have a reason for reporting what they're reporting or you know they're going to try to make uh the data look as good as they can so just kind of keep that in mind that's the setup for these slides um, so for the USDA public search tool, <laughs> you access the link above. That's this first one. You set your search parameters uh, by state, city, type of institution, and all. I'm going to walk you through all this. We're just going over it first. And then you basically download and interpret your data. So let's dive in. Um, if for some reason you can't see this, let me know. Uh, so this is the Animal and Plant Health Inspective Service part of the USDA. This is the inspections report search. Um, I have this link directly saved, um, but you could also probably just Google search animal, uh, USDA inspection report search and equally, um, get here. But this is the URL at the top. I'll drop it in the zoom chat right now, just in case, uh, so you can follow along if you want or need to. Um, so I'll drop each of these links as we go along. So <clears throat> this is what you've really come here for. Um, there's a little bit of information up here at the top, you know, to locate inspection reports 
um, enter the known information and then click the search button, right? So essentially you're just entering in your search parameters. Um, license and registration type, that's the first one here. Um, you know, some of these are relatively self-explanatory. Breeders, dealers, exhibitors, research facilities, um, federal research facility. Um, these are all different types of licensees that have to submit to inspections and reports by the USDA. So if you know that you're looking for a specific type, that's one way you can do it. If you're looking for a city, um, that's pretty obvious. I'm going to actually, this is what we're actually going to search for tonight together because I wanted to show you something that was interesting to me that I found just today that I didn't know about. So go figure. Um, if you prefer a certain zip code, you can put that in. If um, customer organization name, um, what I usually put here is like Vanderbilt University, whatever like thing, whether it's a pet store or like any of these licensee holders, right? It would be whatever the name of the veterans, you know, VA hospital is. It'd be whatever the name of the research facility is. Um, sometimes you may have their number or their certificate number and you can put those in there. But generally, if you're in my shoes, you're not going to have customer or certificate number because you're looking for like, not dirt, but you're looking for reports. And, you know, um, certificate numbers come from the from the institution itself that you're trying to look at the report for. So why would Vanderbilt University give me their certificate number to make it easier to look at their high number of animal cruelty reports? All right, so uh, view licensees, view registrants, and view inspection reports. Um, licensees, it's pretty clear, you know, you can search for different people who have licensees. So let's do a, a search first. Um, so I'm leaving all these parameters clear and I want to see essentially every USDA licensee in the state of Tennessee. See, because I've got whoop, Tennessee selected here. So we're going to search. And it's already given me some. Okay, so these are in no order that makes any fucking sense because um, it's a government fucking website. So welcome to it. Um, but here are licensees. Um, it seems like they start out with the canceled ones first, because if you can see like this entire first page is just like people who um, up to here have a canceled certificate status. Then once you come here, like Nature Center, Tennessee Aquarium, keep in mind too, like if you want to look up, you know, hey, is your local aquarium or zoo like doing some fucked up shit? Guess what? Uh, the USDA is at least supposed to tell you. Um, so you can see there's the Knoxville um, Zoological Gardens, aka the Knoxville Zoo, Memphis Zoo, a rabbit farm, another rabbit farm. Um, so I'm going to um, skip past this because this is essentially, like I said, these are the licensees. This is not the reports. Um, let's click on this tab. I'm going to kind of highlight this section again. So we were on view licensees. Now we're on, whoops view inspection reports this is the good stuff okay so um what we've done now is we've basically said hey show me every inspection report for everything right because these search parameters are all are all clear so show, show me every usda inspection report um recently filed in the state of tennessee and here they all are tennessee aquarium uh cross creek monkeys i have no idea what that is crystal fraser um Okay, cool. So you can see, uh, let me let me back up really quickly and explain like what what all this <laughs> crap in the middle is. So if you look here, you've got view inspection report, right? We'll look at an inspection report in just a second. Customer number. That was that customer number that I told you you probably wouldn't start out with or have certificate number. Same thing. So these are search parameters. Um, if you want to know what Tennessee Aquarium's USDA certificate number is, here it is. And you can look it up that way. Um, this is the date of the inspection, or at least when the inspection was filed. Let me point out these items right here. Direct, non-critical, critical, and teachable moments. Okay, these are silly little names that the USDA gives to animal cruelty um, or like... <sighs> legal violations i don't want to say crimes here right because that has like a certain legal connotation and you're innocent until proven guilty blah blah but um this is the non-compliant item list right so direct is pretty bad non-critical is um 
I mean, just how it sounds, it's, hey, something we needed to write down and you guys need to do better, but it's not critical that you, you know, address it immediately or not, I'm going to result in legal action. Um, this teachable moment thing is something that I'll call out because it, you know, non-compliant items, like I said, this list is pretty self-explanatory, but on teachable moments, um, the last time that I did a, a uh, report that required me to talk to USDA experts, people who sort of like interpret these or send in these complaints for a living like animal activists. Um, teachable moments is sort of a particularly offensive um, strategy that the USDA uses in that things that are really bad, um, really, I would say, moderate to severe abuses are also are are often counted as a teachable moment. And it'll say, hey, like, you know, instead of doing vivisection and doing brain surgery on this monkey with no um, anesthetic, maybe you should give them some pain relief. Um, so teachable moments are often very, um, there's something to pay attention to as much as, you know, critical. So from a journalist point of view, if you're scrolling through here and you see something with a lot of critical um, or a lot of direct, or even, you know, a few scattered like here's these are all pretty low one one three okay but there was one that um i actually found that was really interesting to me um locally and it was because of the high number of well let me see here high number of um issues all right state tennessee city i didn't want that but i did want research facility that's what it was all right so see i've changed it from all to research facility because I wanted to see uh, universities and institutions uh, in Tennessee. And we're just going to wait on it to load. I'm still on in the inspection reports tab. And we're almost done with the USDA, by the way. Um, gosh, this is such data heavy stuff. I know it's like really meaty. While I'm waiting on this to load, if you have any questions uh, or comments, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm still looking at the chat box. So, all right. So let me call your attention to immediately <laughs> these two right here. University of Memphis, non-critical. Okay, look, yeah, they're non-critical, but you had six violations. Come on, three critical? What the fuck? Like, I didn't even notice how bad this one was earlier. But I wanted to look at, um, I had initially wanted, planned to look at this one from Columbia State Community College, because that's like close to me. And they had four non-critical in their community college. So my guess is the only thing they'd be doing is maybe some kind of uh, experiments on rats, but still uh, this University of Memphis one is really bad. So uh, I wanna make sure I didn't do that too fast, but I clicked view uh, under view report, view inspection report. Okay, and it downloads it as a PDF. And then you just open up your PDF and here it is. All right, so um, University of Memphis, right? And here's their address, uh, type routine inspection. Okay, that tells me that they, Ooh, that's pretty rough to have that many on a routine inspection. Like, anyway, all right. So University of Memphis, blah, blah. Prepared by, will tell you like the USDA person who prepared it um, and their, um, what's the phrase? Uh, their role, <laughs> occupation. All right. Okay, so... Let me back up here. Institutional animal care and use. Uh, I cut right. Okay. So these are just the rules and regulations, like um, right here. Significant changes, such as the cessation of daily observations, can result in failure to identify and address animal welfare concerns. Uh, <clears throat> correct by ten one twenty two by ensuring that significant changes are made and approved by ICUC. Okay. So these. Let me actually scroll down. Okay, so these are the charges then, right? Or not charges, but these are their notes. This one actually looks a little different than some of the other ones I've seen. So these are the critical and non-critical um, issues that were reported in the inspection report. So like 2.33b is critical, right? Medical records show that a vole was identified by as having, okay, so the vole had a swollen red, Hairless front left limb, what? Recommended euthanasia and the animal was euthanized. Timing of recommendation is unclear, does not know which protocol this animal was on. Okay, so they don't even know it was there for. Could not locate any 
any additional records. Could not recall this animal. So we have no idea why this poor vole was even there. Not provided any medications. Oh, my Lord. Infection in makes it okay. And then here's how they're, you know, supposed to correct it. So each of these is information on which um, IACUC, IACUC, the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, what they did wrong, what the University of Memphis did wrong, what they should do to correct it, and how they should correct it. So all of that is going to be included here. So this is a routine inspection. So the next time, like if you were going to look into this, if you were located in Memphis and you wanted to do a story about this, you would come back and, you know, you would keep your eye on this page and University of Memphis and you would look for their follow-up um, inspection to see if the next time they had fixed it or not. Um, I mean, this probably is a story in and of itself. Like that is really just unacceptable um, treatment of animals. So you could probably run a story on that alone, but then, you know, a follow-up or if you, you know, this was released. Okay, well, this was released in, what is that, August? So that was quite some time. So yeah, then you might want to see if, okay, well, has anything gotten better since August? And that might be the basis of your story. If you have any questions about USDA, drop them now because we're going to be moving on. Um, let me, hey. Oh, that's why it wouldn't let me. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a second. Okay, hi, I'm back. Um, so we're going to be moving on from USDA. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, like I said, go ahead and drop it while I close all my USDA windows. All right. And uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Here we go. And as a reminder, the USDA uh, media blog is here. So you'll have a link to that as well. Um, I'll just show it to you briefly. This is what it looks like. Like I said, some of this borderlines, you know, propaganda. Delivering energy efficient. Okay, well, who says it's energy efficient? The USDA, the government said that about itself. That kind of thing. Okay, you you get my point. Moving on. National Integrated Drought Information System. I'm going to breeze right through this one because nobody uh, requested this one specifically, but it's important, so I'm going to include it. Um, whoops. Same instructions uh, as before. Access the drought status updates page, which is right here. Beep. Set your search parameters and then download and interpret data. This is what this page looks like. This one is much easier to use. USDA is a fucking nightmare, as you guys saw. All right, select categories to browse updates. So this is drought uh, information specifically. So for example, if you go to um, the Southeast, where I live, not a lot of drought happening. If you go to the West, actually specifically California and Nevada have their own updates, the most recent one being August 19th. Um, of this year. And it will give you key points. It will give you sort of heat maps um, for the different states in that area. All right. So this is drought information. I'll leave that there. If you go to drought.gov slash news, similar thing, news archive. Um, here, this was published obviously October 4th. Now this actually, I already read this. This is actually a really cool initiative published October 3rd. So drought.gov launches new map feature for tribal nations. Um, I have not seen this before. I think this is really cool. Um, you know, you're able to actually perhaps prove environmental racism by looking at, you know, the amount of drought in tribal, uh, you know, native and tribal lands um, and tribal nations so that, hey, all this drought is, you know, focused in a tribal nation. Well, maybe somebody should fucking do something about that. That kind of um, that kind of information could be really helpful. All right, let's move on to the Department of Justice. And I'm going to take one quick break to get a um, sip of water and to rearrange my dongles because uh, my computer's dying and I got to free up a USB-C port. So I will be back in less than 30 seconds. Actually, I'm not even going to leave. I'm just going <laughs> to sit in my chair and get this figured out. All right, so I need. All right. Getting the perfect one there. 
I'm surprised there's not more background noise. I have a pig and a dog and a cat, and they all make noise. All right, so I need to leave my hands. All right. So we'll just be using the trackpad, and it is what it is. Okay. Back to it. Let me get some water here. Anybody have any comments or uh, questions so far? Feel free to drop them. I'm not trying to like super speed through this, but this is a lot. I didn't realize how much this was. Originally, I had planned to actually do 20 um, government agencies tonight, but like <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, so I cut it down to just five and I'm going to make a series of these workshops. Um, okay. Department of Justice. These instructions after this point are just moot because they're essentially the same but you'll see i've got news and blogs now this is different this is very different with the department of justice so when you go to the doj and you go to their news site <clears throat> excuse me these are like official doj filings so let's open up the one that i thought earlier was uh, really interesting all right so from october 6th make sure you note what date you're looking at Former leader of Proud Boys pleads guilty to conspiracy uh, for J6. So as you can see, this is more than just like a, a regular press release. It is, of course, a press release and it is coming from the government. So keep in mind whose point of view this is being written from. But um, this is going to actually be, you know, legally binding information about these cases. So uh, defendant also pleaded to firearms charges. OK, a former leader of the Proud Boys. Jeremy Bertino, 43, pleaded guilty in the District of Columbia. All right. So, um, you know, you guys can read that if you want. Let me grab this link for you in case you um, would like to have that. Where is the chat box? Where is it? Ba -doop -doop. There it is. Cool. So here is this DOJ filing um, so that you can, you know, easily get back to like Office of Public Affairs. Uh, justice news okay um oh yeah just department statement on president's announcements regarding simple possession of marijuana so this is not all going to be like individual charges although um if you know doj is prosecuting it and it's a big case you will see um you know for example decisions made in specific cases um otherwise you may just see um you know more general announcements like when biden says stuff all right, cool. So let's look at their blog page really quickly. Um, this is also interesting because sometimes you will get like reports or news releases about forthcoming reports. Um, here's some information about FOIA. Uh, FOIA reporting deadlines are coming for government agencies. And so you see some um, FOIA information here. We're going to get to all that in just a minute. Um, it's part of the Department of Justice, but I'm going to do FOIA separately because it's such a big topic. All right, cool. If you have any DOJ questions <laughs> or questions about DOJ information, drop them here. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to the National Labor Relations Board or the NLRB, which has sort of been like the darling of um, the darling of, I don't know, uh, the news lately. Like people are really loving the NLRB because of all the union activity that's been going on, which is really great. So the NLRB website is here. News releases is here. I'll show you this page really quickly. Um, this page is helpful because whenever the NLRB makes an announcement, such as like, yeah, election petitions up 43%. Um, I'm trying to find some maybe good union news because um, a lot of times like the, um, yeah, okay. First three quarters union election petitions up 58%. That's great news. And that's a story in and of itself. Um, so that's, you know, this is where you can find all the major NLRB news from the organization. Um, news slash announcements. This page is a little different. Um, so these are more like press releases, I think. Um, yeah or like internal named assistant name regional attorney okay so this is mostly staffing announcements um internal announcements all right recent filings this is an important one so you want to see which employers in your state are shitty guess what here you go <laughs> um if you are on the recent charges and petitions filing page 
you get to see everything that has been complained about to the NLRB. So you might be going down through here and you might see USPS a lot. Uh, you will because USPS gets a lot of freaking NLRB charges. So does Walmart. That one was filed in Baton Rouge. So let me scroll up here to the top and, and go over the information under each one. So you can sort this by any of this information. And then you can sort it in ascending or descending order and you can change your items per page. Um, this right here will be uh, either the name of the company or the name of the union or both that is involved in the filing. Here's your case number. Here's your date filed. So this was filed yesterday. So what I like about the NLRB is that, you know, these things move at least on this website pretty quickly. Um, and you can actually download everything as a data file, a CSV, sort of like spreadsheet file, which is helpful. Uh, and not every government website has it. So big ups to the NLRB for being the least shitty about <laughs> making their information available. Um, okay, so let's open up one of these. Actually, I wanted to look at the... Uh, USPS one. So click on the case number, not the, psh, psh, psh. I guess it's all the same, but my, maybe my wife is just being slow. All right. Case number at the top, date filed, status. I'm going to be honest. There's not going to be a ton of juicy details here, right? Um, because this document may require redactions before it can be viewed. To obtain a co copy, please request through our FOIA branch, which we're going to talk about doing. Uh, but it will tell you what documents have been filed. So like the charging party was signed against the employer that was done 10-5. Okay, so they basically filed everything yesterday. All right, there are no related documents. Uh, <clears throat> I very rarely see anything there. Uh, allegations, discipline, changes in terms and condition of employment. So it will tell you, you know, which uh, labor law statute that it, they're being accused of um, breaking. You can see the party who's been charged. So the USPS legal rep is uh, here for the United States Postal Service. The charging party is an individual, um, so no individual information. Um, and then here's more about the charged party and respondent. So um, if there are related cases, they'll be here. Um, at least sometimes you'll get more contact information for the different involved participants, but not always, but a phone number is at least like somewhere to start. Um, so you can begin to ask questions or make calls or whatever you need to do. All right. Last NLRB bit right here is board decisions. This one is really important um, because you'll be able to see how the NLRB ruled on all of the, basically you're getting to see the before and the after. So the filings are what's currently in process. And then the board decisions are like what happened um, to each of those as, as they were decided. So again, you can, well, I don't, I don't know anything about this volume right here. Uh, page number items per page. I mean, these are your, you know, search parameters. You can search by case number. So if you have a case number from the filing, um, like that, we just viewed, like once that specific Montgomery, Alabama USPS one is decided, it'll go here. And then the case number will be the same. Um, let's look at T-Mobile because I have T-Mobile and I want to know, was it this one? Okay, cool. So it'll download it as a PDF. Most of these do. Uh, T-Mobile and Communications Workers, America, AFL-CIO. All right, cool. So this would be a good one to read. Um, I wish I had time to talk about <laughs> interpreting these filings, but a lot of it, uh, you know, like this, the allegations in this case arose during a multi-year campaign by the union. So it's not totally unreadable. Like a lot of this is going to be thick and dense and boring. And yes, it will suck, but it's it's not it's not unable to be conquered. Starbucks, yeah. Like I'll learn how to read this legal jargon to read about how shitty Starbucks is. Um, because I love a PSL, but dang, uh, they really got some labor violations going on in that company. All right, cool. So back to the presentation. Um, if you have any NLRB questions, go ahead and drop them. I'm going to move forward. I think this is our last one. Yeah, the EPA. Because basically everybody that, well, a lot of people that signed up for this were like EPA, EPA, like in the survey. So I want to make sure that I covered it. Um, all right. So again, these uh, instructions are essentially the same, right? You got to go to the search tool. You got to set your parameters and then you got to click the individual cases. Um, so let's go to EPA news releases first. 
again, some of this is equivalent to uh, propaganda, right? Like, look how good we are at, you know, reducing lead exposure. Look how efficient we're being, you know, wow, we're recognizing you, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's helpful to know um, what the agency is sort of like prioritizing. And I will say you do see a lot more about climate change on government news releases than you do in the media um, for whatever reason. This is not everything that you can find at the EPA, but I'm about to show you a tool that I feel is probably the most powerful we've covered tonight. Um, and that's why I saved it for last. And also, by the way, guys, after this, I'm going to have a QA and a session, like if you want to ask questions, and I, we still have to go over FOIAs. So I'm, I'm about to stick the landing on this thing, but I just wanted to let you know what's coming up. All right. Enforcement case search results. This one is so fun. All right, cool. So, uh, wait, did I get ahead of myself? Let me open that link one more time. Yeah, okay, because I did results. I see what I did. Okay, sorry, guys. Let me back up one step so that this is not confusing. Because it could be confusing. <laughs> All right. Woo! Search. All right, cool. Look at this thing. Hey, don't murder me in the middle of my... I'm teaching people how to find... EPA enforcements. <laughs> that's my partner, y'all. That's Timmy. Anyway, so um, this page looks really intimidating because there's so many search parameters, but I'm going to show you the way that I would do it because I have a, a better way. All right, I'm leaving all these parameters, okay? I'm leaving literally all of them blank. I don't give a shit. I'm leaving an interactive map. This is the important part. You see where it says results view interactive map i swear to god if you hit data table you're gonna have a bad time um <laughs> yeah jason says don't murder lonnie act right <laughs> um i'm so glad that i have like a bro like he's my best friend but also he's my partner it works it's great anyway okay uh enforcement cage search results all right look the epa guess where it does shit in the u.s and u.s territories so um you know you're not gonna find fucking epa reports for africa but look you zoom in Woo! i'm gonna zoom in to tennessee because that's where i live all right you guys can see what's going on here right there's more than 1500 freaking epa uh ooh, is that ramen no it's better oh it is better thank you my dear uh, so there's 1,512 EPA enforcement cases in the state of Tennessee that you can look at right now. I'm going to click on them. I'm going to click on that 1,512, and let's see what happens. All right. So uh, my assumption is that these little outliers here are maybe people who are based in Tennessee, but for whatever reason, their violation was judged in a different jurisdiction. Um, I haven't looked at each of these individual enforcement cases, but clearly that's a, that's a jurisdiction thing. Now, uh, you can... Uh, filter it by you know pesticides hazardous waste <laughs> what what kind of horrible <laughs> environmental problem would you like to find uh but i'm just gonna zoom on in um and now you can see these are made into individual pins um whoops hey don't do that zoom in yes thank you so each of these individual pins are a different color. And of course that will like relate to the key over here. Um, you can look through the list view here, or you can just click on um, a pin and then click on the detailed facility report. And here you go. Facility report. Um, it will tell you, let me see here, uh, cases, by the way. So, all right, this enforcement case with the EPA is against Warren Fa Farmers Cooperative. I have no idea who that is, but whatever. They're located in, in McMinnville. Great, right? All right, so we just look at their detailed facility uh, summary, but that's fine and dandy. What we really want is cases, Warren County Farmers Cooperative. Um, and this is the case report. So here's gosh this is so y'all i'm such a dweeb for numbers and this data is so delicious to me basic information here's your case number right great um enforcement outcome final order with penalty uh penalties case level here's what we want to know how much money did they have to pay um and in here 
you'll get some estimated pollutant reductions. Okay, uh, let's see. I was looking to see if it would tell me exactly like what they <laughs> spilled. Final order one. No, of course not. Complying actions, supplemental. Okay. Well, it don't tell me exactly what they did wrong, which sucks. Uh, but we know how much they had to pay and we know what the outcome was. Um, you know, and we have a case number and guess what? If we want to learn more, we can FOIA the EPA for that case number. So let's move on to FOIA. Um, unless you have any EPA questions, which case drop them in the chat. Uh, all right. FOIA. What is FOIA? Oh, buddy. I'm sure everybody here knows. It is the Freedom of Information Act. Um, and it is also your key to accessing publicly available government data. Um, it was passed in 1967. And here's a quote about the uh, Freedom of Information Act from the actual FOIA site. Um, I'm going to show you two things about FOIA. The first is if you don't know what the Freedom of Information Act is or like what it means, here is the, um, you know, government's website sort of like introductory, what is FOIA, um, which is a really helpful um a really helpful website to kind of help get you started um okay so the next thing i want to talk about in regards to FOIAs is how to send a FOIA um i'm still screen sharing so i'm gonna show you a FOIA wait ooh no i can't i can't show you that FOIA i'm trying to think of a FOIA that i can show <laughs> i can show you uh yeah chicago police let's do that one <laughs> Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, all right, so I sent this back in 2017, and this is still, um, this is still the way I basically send uh, FOIA requests to a certain extent. So, uh, oh, this is a follow up. Okay, regardless, whatever. It, you can see how casual this is. Um, so I'm sending it to FOIA at ChicagoPolice.org. Now, if you want to send a FOIA request. You have to send it to the person at the agency. You cannot send it to like, like there's no like place where you're like, I would like to FOIA request this person. That's not how this works. Like you got to send this specific records request to a specific entity. And here I'm sending it to the Chicago police. They happen to be a government entity. So they're subject to FOIA. Um, you know, the gas station down the street, not subject to FOIA. Important to remember, you cannot FOIA the gas station. You can FOIA the government about how many gas stations are in your county, um, but you cannot FOIA the gas station. So just a little uh, a little analogy there. All right, FOIA at Chicago Police. Hey, I'm doing, I hope you're doing well. See, I'm even nice to these people. I'm following up on a request sent a few days ago. Um, so this obviously isn't the original request, but this is what's preserved in my email. So this is all you have to say. I'm looking for the number of pedestrian deaths and injuries that happened in the Austin neighborhood of Chicago between 2014 and present. I'd also like to know how many of those were hit and runs. Thanks so much. Now, there are different ways that you can say this and be more formal. Certainly, as I've gotten older, um, I have redone my FOIA. Oh, God, I just don't know if I should. I'm trying to I'm trying to show you an example without getting myself in trouble for like stories I'm working on at the moment. Thanks so much for follow up in a few days. We don't receive a response so from iPad. Okay. And then, you know, here's the Chicago PD's response. Um, keep in mind, generally, some legal um, requirements around this. People have to respond to you. The government agency has to respond. They don't have to give you anything, but they have seven days uh, to respond. In most places, the law may be different a little bit from state to state. I would have to look and double check. But in general, um, there is a legal limit to how long they can, you know, mess you around. So they need to respond within seven days and tell you whether they plan to approve or deny. And then they have 30 additional days to give you the actual documentation. In my experience, sometimes agencies will be like, oh, you sent a FOIA? Here's this thing that you needed. Boop. But that hardly ever happens. Okay. Most of the time, if you're asking the government for information, number one, they probably don't fucking know where it is. And number two, they don't want to give it to you, even if they know where it is. I'm, look, I just, I'm not trying to be an ass. It just, it is what it is. Okay. Because every single time I ask for any information from anybody, any government entity, I swear to God, I have to follow up every single time and be like, hey, today is the seventh day, bro. Like, if you don't give me my information, 
the way I phrase it is I'll say, hey, you know, my name is, well, now it's Lonnie, but this was at the time. Uh, you know, my name is Lonnie. I'm following up. It's the seventh day. You're, you know, legally obligated to give me uh, an answer as to whether or not you're going to give me these documents. And then usually um, I'll add, if you plan to deny it, let me know and I will continue with, you know, exercising my legal rights in the next step of the process. So it's you're not threatening anybody with litigation, but you're just letting them know like, hey, I know what I'm legally entitled to. And you had seven days to get me this information, you know, or or to give me a, an answer. And then um, they have 30 days after that to return it. So this is an example of a FOIA. Um, like I said, you can make it more formal, but this will do. Um, if for some reason you have to send it in to uh, via mail, I mean, I don't think anybody still requires that anymore. That was a thing, obviously, before the internet. Cool. So I want to show you this now. This is the last thing about FOIA that I'll show you. The FOIA requires each federal agency to submit an annual report to the Attorney General each year. Woohoo! Do you know why this is exciting? I'm, I'm telling you, I get so thrilled about this because, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you look down through here, um, these are basically a report of the reports. So every year, every government agency has to say how many FOIA requests they got, how long it took them to respond, um, what the results were, and you can look at them all. <laughs> and it's on the Department of Justice website, and it's on this uh, link right here, which I'll drop for you. Uh, annual FOIA report. Reports. Let me copy and paste and drop that for you right here. There we go. Um, oh, This is a lot of fun. You want to talk about finding people who be doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing? Right here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you in, in, if I was from East Tennessee. All right, cool. So um, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Annual FOIA reports. Annual FOIA reports. Fiscal year 21. Federal departments and agencies. Oh my gosh, here they all are. Now, listen, I don't know what the law is on this. Okay, sorry. If they're not here, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I only, I only know, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't know what to do about the ones that may or may not legally be required to be here and may or may not be here yet. So I can only talk to you about what's here. Department of Agriculture. Let's look at a FOIA report. All right. So, uh, component name, blah, blah, we don't care about that. Uh, we don't care about that. I don't care. How many? What? Total number of times relied upon by agents. Okay. That's cool. FOIA request received. APHIS. APHIS is, uh, some department in the USDA, but I don't remember what but they got 616 at the start. They had pending 825 number processed 1014 pending as a, okay. So they processed about half of what they received in the fiscal year. Um, not, that's just rough math. That's not including the ones that they had left over from last year. Cool. So not only can you send a FOIA request, but you can see what government agencies are doing about the FOIA requests that are sent to them. Okay, cool. That's all the information I have to throw at you. Uh, before I go, please, uh, well, first of all, there's a Q&A is coming, but uh, support Southern Appalachian Pop Press. This is my Patreon, my Twitter, uh, the SACP Twitter. Um, we have a big launch coming on October 15th. Um, I have a feature on police brutality in Lawrence County, power grid failures in Appalachia, and anti-trans bills in Tennessee. So there's some good shit coming. That's happening October 15th, and that content will be free. So even if you don't support, like, you'll still be able to read it. And I don't mean that in, like, a, even if you can't support me, mm, I just mean, like, hey, man, times is tough, okay? That's a gallon of fucking milk that you could be buying probably without 